We're Malin and Johan, a Swedish couple that have been sailing full time since 2016. After three and a half years of sailing, we welcomed our daughter Vera on board. Most recently, we bought a farm in Sweden where we are going to build our dream boat ourselves from scratch. Welcome aboard and please subscribe for weekly episodes. So it's almost time to start planking the hull and that means that we have some decisions to make and how to plank the hull, where to start and the best way to do it. Uh, but also the most efficient and fast and best way to do all the scarf joints that we need to do. Because the cedar strips that we have, the longest of those are around five and a half meters. But the hull side here is almost, yeah, 15 and a half meters. So we need about three or sometimes four strips to make up one length of the hull. So there's going to be a lot of scarf joints in the whole construction here. So we need to find an efficient and fast way to do this. Uh, so I thought I should just make a simple test to just compare the strength between some different joints here. Uh, first I have a 60 degree angle joint with a pretty large surface area for the glue. And by the way, we're using just the thickened epoxy to glue these joints with. Uh, and then we have a 45 degree angle joint, like this one. And then just a simple butt joint, zero degrees or 90 degrees, however you see it. Right now I'm actually leaning against this type of joint. It's the simplest one, it's the fastest one, it will use less glue. It's also the joint with the, the least amount of waste. Uh, since we don't have to cut any angles on it. Um, and I also think that this is strong enough because we will never stack joints on the adjacent planks here, or strips. They will sit far apart, the joints. So together as a panel, uh, also with the glass on the outside and on the inside, I think even if you use joints like this, butt joints, it will be equally as strong as if we've been using uh, 60 degree angle joints. But even so, I'm thinking it could be interesting just to see how big the difference is between these different joints. Um, just how much weight can they take? Uh, maybe the 60 degree angle joint is as strong as the actual wood itself. So the way I'm going to do this test is just to hang a bucket here and load that up with bricks until it breaks and then I will weigh that amount of bricks so we can get the number to put on the chart here so we can make the comparison. I have two samples of each. Um, I have to throw away the third sample because two of them were bad. But um, these two samples of each will give me an indication on how big the difference really is between them. I'm thinking we're going to start with the 60 degree angle joint here. Uh, it's supposed to be the strongest of the three here. I will put a piece of wood here on top of the wood so that the handle here, the sides, won't uh, affect the test with crushing the wood here on the sides. Uh, something like that. And then... I think the problem here will be to, <laughs> to keep this bucket in the middle. Maybe... The handle on this one is better. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Maybe this bucket is too small for the amount of bricks that I need to break this one. You always get surprised on how strong wood really is. This is, by the way, Swedish spruce. So, yeah, here you can see it failed at the joint, but it took with it some of the, the surrounding wood. There's actually a defect here in the wood, some small knots. 
So that first sample of the 60 degree angle, it took 18 and a half kilos. Pretty impressive. Uh, I put it in grams here. All right, let's try the second 60 degree angle joint. Looks like it's stronger. Oop. <laughs> well, that was actually the exact same amount. The same stones went in there, so same weight. So, let's try the 45 degree. Okay. Three small stones less. All right, let's see the weight on that. So that was 12.4 kilos. So let's try the second one. This one has a beginning of a defect, small knot or something, pretty close to the scarf. So I'm thinking this might be a lot weaker than the first one. Hmm, it was just about one stone or brick, half a brick weaker. Yeah, nine and a half kilos on that one. So a bit weaker, but I think that was because of that knot. So on to the next one, which to me is the most interesting, the zero degree angle joint. See how that performs. I'm guessing four kilos. I think we'll use some smaller bricks just to load this up a bit more slowly. Yeah, I don't know if I should count the last one or maybe I should. Let's see. Not bad. 9.2 kilos almost, but again, the last brick there, it failed exactly when I put it in, so probably it's a bit lower, but we'll see on the next sample. I will go a bit slower on that with smaller bricks to see a bit closer where the actual failing weight is. All right, the last sample. Yeah, a bit less. I think this is a more accurate number. 7.45 kilos. I was actually surprised on how well this performed compared to this one. The difference here isn't big, but the amount of work of doing this joint is a lot more than just doing the simple butt joint. Like I tried to explain earlier, if you have a joint like this, the adjacent strips won't have their joint at that location. Since all the strips are glued together here on the sides, the surface area here is really a small portion of the strength since it's the surface area of the whole length here on the sides are helping a lot more with the strength uh, for this piece than the actual joint here. So that's why I'm thinking that you have to see it like a panel and not for the strength of every single strip that you put in. But there is another aspect as well in this, and that's that you don't want to create a hard spot when you're planking the hull. You want to have a fair curve. And which of these that are the best on that. I'm thinking it should be this one, 
but I'm not sure. Maybe the difference isn't that big. Um, maybe it's still okay with the butt joint, but I think we'll just have to try it out maybe once we start planking. But so this is the result, and yeah, I put the 60 degree angle result here as 100% strength, and we compare the other samples to this one. Um, and I have added these two numbers together and divided them to have something, a middle ground to calculate from. So the 45 degree angle joint has a 59% strength compared to the 60 degree joint here. And as you can see, the zero degree is at 45%. So to me, there's not a big difference between these two. So I think the big decision that we have to make is, should we make the effort and do the 60 degree, or should we go with the zero degree butt joint? To prevent the epoxy when we're planking from uh, sticking to the plywood here, I'm putting on this white plastic film, it's a sort of tape, on the edges here. And in theory, the epoxy shouldn't stick to this type of plastic. So it will be easier once we turn the hull over to release these uh, to get them out. So it's another week here at the farm, and as you can see, I have started the process of planking the hull. I've done two strips on the shear line on this side and one on the other side. And the plan is to keep an even pace on both sides going up the hull, so we won't pull these temporary frames out of alignment. I've also made a decision that we're going to plank the hull from the shear line going up. Uh, initially, we were thinking that we should use a master plank and go in both directions. But I've been doing a lot of measurements here on the hull and I think we will be fine with this type of hull form going from the shear line and up to the keel. I think it will be a bit easier to apply the epoxy because you can do it from the top, at least for a big portion of the hull. We also decided that the first two planks on the hull will be five millimeters thinner than the planks for the rest of the hull. And the reason we want to have it like that is because we want the glass fiber, or the fiberglass that are coming down from the deck to join the hull structure with the deck. That extra glass needs somewhere to go. So it's nice to have like a recess here uh, where that glass can come into. And you might wonder which type of joint did we decide to go with? And after a lot of thinking and testing, we just decided to go with the 60 degree angle joint. And the reason is not so much the extra strength that we could get from that. It's more that I found that it was a bit easier to get a fair curve on the hull uh, with that type of joint compared to just using the butt joint. We will have some extra waste from that, but not too much compared to using like a real scarf joint, like a 1 to 12 joint. Uh, this is just a joint that is about this long, so it's still perfectly fine for that, not too much waste. I still haven't decided if we're going to do all the scarfing on the boat or if we're going to scarf long strips on the side and then place them on the hull. Uh, still have to do some thinking about that, which type of uh, process will be the fastest. Because that's one thing that is really important here. Since we're going to add a lot of strips to the hull, there's around 150 in width here at the widest part, so quite many of them. Uh, we need a way to work efficiently, so this won't take too much time. So there's many things you can do to speed up the process of planking the hull. And uh, one of them is find a way how to keep the planks snug during the curing process of the glue line here. Um, and, of course, you could use, use uh, simple clamps and hold them together during the curing. 
But the problem with that is that then you can only do one strip at a time, at least when you're doing it from the shear line like this and going up. If we would use a master plank, you could do one on each side and then do two on the other side, but that's still only four a day. Uh, I would like to see somewhere around six to eight strips, full length strips per day to have a good speed on this build. And I've been looking around a lot on a good way to keep the planks tight during the curing. And some people have used wooden dowels. So I tried that, drill a hole, put a wooden dowel through to keep the planks aligned in this direction, but also to keep them tight like this. And it worked fine to keep the alignment and the, the curve fair, but not so much keeping the glue line tight. So I gave that up. Um, I also, before this, looking at buying like a brad nailer, I think it's called, like a pneumatic gun with the nails, with plastic nails. Uh, but I gave that up because it was very expensive and uh, I wasn't sure. Uh, how effective it would be, uh, because the planks are pretty wide, 45 millimeters. Uh, and then I found a company that actually has a nail gun with wooden dowels. That would have been perfect. Uh, 65 millimeter wooden dowels or nails that you can just punch or shoot straight through to keep the glue line tight. That would have been perfect, but I never received an answer from that company, so I gave that up, and it's probably pretty expensive as well. So what I've been trying now is to just use normal, or not normal, but screws. Two of them between each temporary frame to keep the glue line tight. And since this is Western Red Cedar, it can be pretty harsh on the metal in the screws, so you need a really high quality screw. So we're going to go with acid-proof stainless steel screws to keep this together. And I know that some of you are going to say, but hey, you can't use stainless steel in a hull like this, especially not below the waterline. You will have crevice corrosion, oxygen starvation corrosion and stuff like that. But I promise you, it won't be a problem here because this is not a traditional boat, wood boat. This is a composite, it's like a sandwich uh, construction and if we would get water into the core, the wood here, we would have much much bigger problems than some crevice corrosion in those screws. Um, and on top of that, these screws will be buried in epoxy. They will not really add, or they will add to the strength of the boat, but they're not there for that. Um, they're just there to keep the glue line tight during the curing process. And the reason we're leaving them in is because we need to add another strip and another strip before the first glue line is cured. So it's just a way to speed up the planking process. And I think this for us is the best way to do that. Uh, you could of course use bronze screws as well, but I don't think you need that since it's inside the plank. It will just add to the cost of the build. Um, and we're going to need around 7,000 of those screws, so things adds up. So stainless steel, but acid-proof stainless steel are expensive enough, <laughs> I promise. And for those who don't know, uh, this hull will be a sandwich construction. So we will have epoxy with glass fiber on the outside, western red cedar in the middle, and then glass fiber with epoxy on the inside. So a real sandwich construction. To keep the planks tight against the frames during the planking process, we're using a simple screw with a big washer on top so we can have a good pressure on the plank uh, and not making a big mark here on the soft uh, cedar. As I was admiring the first strips on the hull, the mic stopped recording. But I was just saying how amazing it is to start seeing the shape of the hull. And also that Johan and I will do another set of strips now and set a timer to see how long it will take. We need three strips to cover the whole length of the boat. Do you need a hand? Yeah. <laughs> 
Yes, please. They're pretty long, huh? Så. Nu har vi den biten klar. And this is an area where we could really speed things up by having a more efficient way to get the epoxy out. These pumps aren't very fast, especially now since it's not very warm yet. It's still only around 10 degrees. So the viscosity of the epoxy is still pretty thick. So it takes some time for these pumps to come up again. So I think And you have to wait until it goes yeah. all the way up, until you can push yeah, it again. Yeah, I mean, I, I can take the, the hardener in between, because that's a lot faster. It's a bit of uh, trial and error, how much epoxy we need per plank. Uh, right now we're going to try with the 250 milliliters into a pastry bag and I hope that's enough for one go and it's that it's not too much because we don't want to waste any epoxy so <laughs> yeah So that was one hour and 30 minutes to get that plank in place. Um, pretty okay, I think. But <laughs> six planks a day would be uh, a lot of work. So we need to be more efficient. And I think we can speed things up by uh, the mixing of the epoxy needs to go faster. And also um, uh, the scarf joints. We need to find a way to attach those faster. Maybe it's better to do the scarf joints and glue them before we put the full length plank on there. Maybe that would be faster to just glue a couple of them uh, the day before and then apply the whole plank in one go. The past 12 months have been really tough seeing a close one being sick. And the last couple of weeks have been especially hard. But now Yuan's father is free from all the pain. 